little setup here now with the Ford dealer diagnostic tool on the Ford Ranger. 2021 plate, two litre diesel. We know it's gonna give us the fault codes, etc. We know it's gonna do the global scan. We're gonna show you that. We've got our battery voltage here, which is highlighted now in our bottom right-hand corner, as opposed to the top left. We've got our connections down here at the bottom of the screen, which are all green and good. So we've got our connection to the VCI. Again, I've set it up on wireless, because I'm not doing any coding and programming at this point. But if we were, then obviously we'd want it on a USB connection, because we really wanna make sure that that data and that information gets into the VCI. Vehicle. But for the purpose of diagnostics, we're okay on Wi-Fi, we've got a good Wi-Fi strength, and more importantly, we've got our GYS battery support unit on, keeping that constant voltage. So we're going to go ahead now, I've made sure the ignition is switched on, we're going to hit the read VIN from vehicle. This is going to manually now read the VIN, input the VIN, which it has done. We now have to click the go option. Now the go option automatically starts and that starts now the downloading of the vehicle information. So it knows exactly how the vehicle was built. So it knows what it's looking for and it's looking to marry up those details on the vehicle. Have I got everything that I left the factory and build with? Which is really quite, can be quite useful and really important in certain jobs and certain instances. This will hopefully identify as well those ECUs that are on the vehicle and whether the software within them is already up to date or whether they do need updating. So we're doing our network performance tests. So as before with the Autocom tool, we had to start our global system scan ourselves manually. With the dealer diagnostic tool, we don't. It's identified the VIN and it's automatically doing that as part of its uh, gathering of data and, uh, and information. Whilst it's running its network performance test and it's identifying certain things, it's worth just pointing out as well this little module overview screen here. So you can see here, dealer diagnostic software likes to use various colours so you can quickly identify what faults they are, whether they're historical faults, whether they're actual what they call CMDT. Now a CMTD is a continuously monitored diagnostic drill code. That's something obviously that's something you need to be aware of. And really importantly as well is this gray little option here that says it's not responding. That can be really useful for modules that don't get detected whilst we're in global scan. So things, for example, you may have a broken wire, it may be off the CAN bus, it may be short circuited. So it's quite useful to see the vehicle ECUs that should be there and the ones that are actually not responding. So this is the latest generation VCM3. You can see it's hard at work here with the lights that are flashing away. We've now gathered the information that is required. So you can see the additional information that it gives us on the dealer tool on this right hand side. So it knows now exactly what this vehicle is. It knows the mileage, it knows the engine, it knows the transmission, it knows how it was built, it knows the colour, when it was built uh, and all of the information from the database that's held on Ford has just been now downloaded and, uh, and compared. On this left hand side menu screenshot here now we've got the ECU systems the description so we know what the call the ECU so we've got the acronyms here we've got the full description and then really importantly in this center column here this nice little colorful display we can see now which of the ECUs that are green that have responded positively with no fault codes in them and we've got the ones here with the, the little amber and the little yellow ones to indicate obviously that we've got fault codes stored within them so as you can see one of the things that's easily identifiable from our previous scan that we did with our Autocom diagnostic tool. We only had two ECUs on a global scan that found faults. Here now, interestingly, we've got a number of different ECUs that are reporting various fault codes within them. So I've just asked it to display these fault codes for us now. So it's jumped to an additional tab across the top of the screen. We've now got our self-test tab. Our self-test tab will now uh, give us those fault code uh, descriptions in a bit, little bit more detail. Okay, so you can see now we're now into the main results of the software. So straight away we can see that our powertrain control module or our engine ECU has got faults. We know that's got faults in, but also as well we've got some uh, faults down here in these additional modules. Moving on to the right hand side, because I haven't yet selected an ECU to work with, on the right hand side now it's giving me an overview of everything that we can do within the dealer diagnostic software. So from various things such as self-tests, we've got uh, power balance, we've also got obviously uh, reading of configuration data, and we've got some uh, features and functions on here that you don't get with aftermarket tools, such as module programming and software updating. All right, so I'll take you through the tabs one by one so you can, you can see exactly what's done. Now it's worth noting in this first little column, we've got these little stars. Now some of them are yellow and some of them are, are white. 
What that does basically is that allows you to pick your favorites. So if you're coming in here and you're wanting to do injector programming quite a lot, you can find the injector programming functionality here. You can click the first column to highlight it yellow, and then that will appear over here then in the second tab in the favorites. So when I click the favorites, only the items with the yellow stars will be displayed. All right, we can select and deselect those and play about with those as much as you like. What we've also got then, if I just go back very, very quickly to the all section, the next tab along after the favorites is the offline. Now, again, you can see in this second column here, you've got some that have not got any symbol in, and then you've got these ones here with the little, gray, uh, little green Wi-Fi symbols. So if I click the offline mode, what that will do is just take out anything that requires an internet connection to physically be run. All right, so now all I'm looking at is functions that can be run without an internet connection. Again, quite, can be quite useful if you're going to want to do something and you're not sure, am I too far away from the Wi-Fi? Am I out in a particular area? Have I gone on a breakdown, for example? All right, certain things that we can do that don't require an internet connection. Moving on to the multi-module. Now, the multi-module will show you tests and features that will communicate with more than one ECU. So if, uh, for example, a tow bar configuration could be quite a good example, where the tow bar information is stored within certain different modules to obviously affect the parking sensor sensors, et cetera, et cetera. So we can get, um, so this will display certain tasks and certain features, um, such as, for example, the self-test. Because the self-test runs through all the modules on the car, it's in the multi-module tab. Moving along to the next tab, we've got our software update. So this is something, obviously, that's unique to dealer diagnostic tooling. This is really the why you need a dealer diagnostic tool because not all faults on vehicles are hardware specific faults. You're not always changing and removing components and swapping them and putting a new component on. Sometimes there is a technical bulletin that will tell you that there's actually a software weakness within the ECU and we need to update that software level to the most current level so that the vehicle becomes drivable again to its correct parameters. So we've had this before for those of you that are Ford specialists, you'll probably remember a while ago, the Ford Transit. They had a problem with that exact um, sensor on the end of the rail. Um, and what you would do is the, uh, you'd replace the sensor, you'd take the vehicle on a road test, and before you knew it, the sensor would disintegrate and explode into bits because the fuel delivery pressure was too high. That was caused by a software error, and we needed to update the software to change that algorithm to make sure then that when you drove it, it was reporting the exact desired fuel pressure and it wasn't, wasn't being manipulated. So really, really important. Now from this screen, this software update screen, we can see quite interestingly, the ones that are listed here are the modules that do have software updates for them. Any module that's already on the latest version of software will not be listed here. So again, really quite useful, and at the blink of an eye, you can see exactly which module has a software update. I wouldn't suggest going out and doing a software updates on all these modules. If the module is performing well and there's no issue or problem, then there's no need to do a software update. So that's one of the biggest misconceptions people fall into. They will start, they'll see software updates. Sometimes that can get you in more trouble than actually resolving the problem first off. Because if there's an issue that needs fixing first, we'd advise you do that before you attempt to do software updates. Only really perform a software update if you can find a technical service bulletin informing you to do so. Top tip, yeah, don't get yourselves down that really wrong rough road of updating a software module and finding out that suddenly the car doesn't start anymore. Yeah, only do that if you know what you're doing and you've been informed to do so. The next one along, programmable features. Now, some of these tabs, uh, these have only just been introduced. So again, the programmable features, they're things like disabling, enabling, and reactivating, and, and uh, disactivating. Now, the guided routines, the last time I checked, there was nothing within guided routines. Obviously, they're always uh, evolving the software, they're always adding things. So again, expect to see something in that link uh, a, little bit, a little bit later on. What's really interesting as well is the little search option here. So if I go back to the all tab, so this is everything. If I'm looking for injector programming, and there's a really big long list and I really can't see the wood for the trees, if I start to type in here in this little search box, injector, and what that will do is that will quite clearly shrink that list down and only display me the functions with the word injector within them. All right, so really quite good. 
Where you can get a bit unstuck really is you really need to know the terminology for the vehicle manufacturer that you're working on. So certain components are called different things from manufacturer to manufacturer. But again, our technical support team, they're on hand to help you and guide you. Again, we offer obviously training on the tool as well. So again, you'll learn all of these hints and tips whilst you're doing your training and whilst you're speaking to our tech support guys. So you're always learning and always getting the most out of your tool. I can see here that there's the, uh, in the PCM, there's the fuel injector learned values. So these are like the um, codes, if you like. Yeah, so first of all, there's one here that says a check. I'm gonna simply go ahead and perform this check. It is one that requires an internet connection. We are on the internet. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna download that application. Okay, once that application is then downloaded, that should then be highlighted in green with the words run. Once it's in the run mode, we can then simply click run and that will actually now start to perform that particular function that we need. Yeah, so again, it tells me the fuel injector check, this procedure should be used to check new service fuel injectors for a known failure and concern before installation. It's telling us there, record the fuel injector, the 13 digit part number located on top. So again, with the dealer diagnostic tool, Information is key. Now we're talking Ford vehicle specific technical information built into the Ford dealer tool. Scroll down. Again, from the list below, select the part number matching the recorded data. So what we now need to do is we now need to check that it's got one of these two part numbers physically fitted. Some of these parts may be modified components. If it's a modified component, I think what it's trying to do here is identify what type of uh, unit we've got fitted. Is it an old one? Is it a new one? All right, so we need to check now with the exact, these are the part number. This isn't the coding, this is the specific part number. So it's not going to let us proceed until we physically selected the correct part number from the pictures that we've got. This is just some of the insights and overviews as to what is available with the dealer diagnostic tool. To want to know more, then speak to one of our technical specialists or our sales department and ask about the Ford Dealer Diagnostic FDRS software. If you'd like to see more information about the Ford Dealer Diagnostic tool, head to our YouTube videos. We've done quite a few YouTube videos on there for you to look at your own leisure. Or alternatively, you can visit maverickdiagnostics.com and that will show you exactly what hardware and what software that we can offer to get you started.